My ex-husband divorced me, then married our therapist. If I may, I want to submit my story to the true epic channel. I listened to a story posted on here about a wife asking for an open marriage and her husband divorced her and married a beautiful teacher. Well, I can relate. I asked my husband for an open marriage in 2020 during the pandemic. He told me no, but then caught me talking with the guy I met on Tinder. I never went out with the man because everything was shut down. If the world wasn't temporarily closed, then I'm sure I would have stepped out on my husband physically. I agreed to attend church more and see a therapist. The therapist attended our church. She obviously always had the hots for my husband. She'll have to take up her sins with God. So in 2020, my ex-husband, Teddy, and I, Jay, had been married for six years, happily with one child. My daughter from a previous relationship. My daughter was 10 when Teddy and I got married. He accepted my daughter as his own. I truly commended Teddy for what he did. Not only how he treated me, but how he treated my daughter. She's not biologically his, and he made sure he was there for her every single day. Unlike her father, her father abandons her when she was young. I would beg her father to stay in her life. He was upset that I didn't want to be with him. My daughter's biological father wanted to marry me when he found out I was pregnant but I just no longer wanted to be in a relationship. I didn't grow up thinking I needed to find a husband to spend the rest of my life with or anything like that. But I did want a child and I told him that before, but he just didn't listen. He thought we were going to have this happy life together. And at the time, I just didn't want it, but I was happy that I was going to be a mother and I just wanted him to be in his daughter's life. He said, if I can't be with you in marriage, then I don't want anything to do with you or the child. He told me to terminate the pregnancy. I remember us having a huge argument, and I told him there's no way I would do that. And he said to me, don't expect anything from me, and he disappeared, even left the state. I've tried to go after him for child support, but it's been a roller coaster. Excited that I was going to get money, and then he'll switch jobs and go somewhere else. He'll disappear. I was spending money on a lawyer. It was hectic, so I gave up. He's been long gone a long time ago. It's a shame that a man can just do that. Impregnate a woman and just disappear, just like that, and not take care of his responsibility. The crazy thing is, when I met Teddy, I remember Teddy and I are doing some research, trying to find my daughter's biological father, just seeing what he's up to. We found him. He was living in Kentucky, married with children. He went and had another family with someone else, knowing that he has a daughter here in Michigan. He doesn't even care. It's so sad. My daughter never met him, ever. She looks to Teddy as her father. My daughter is who nicknamed my ex-husband Teddy. She always called him a big old bear, her daddy Teddy. I'd say around 2018 is when Teddy and I started to really have issues in our marriage. As you all could imagine, my ex-husband is a little on the heavy side. He's not huge. He's more muscular fat. It's nice on him, though. He's not sloppy or anything. He's just a big guy. In college, Teddy was on the weightlifting team in college and entered several competitions after college. My ex-husband was supposed to be in the Summer Olympics in 2020. He was disqualified in 2018, early with a large group of others. I won't get into why, but this actually put a strain on our marriage. It's almost as if Teddy blamed me for his disqualification. I had nothing to do with it. I supported him, and I was there for him. But according to him, I was stressing him out when I knew that he was wanting this and this was his dream, according to him. I was the reason why he lost focus. It confuses me because, even if he hadn't lost focus, that's not the reason he was disqualified and he knows this, but yet he still accuses me. Anyway, our marriage had stress on it, so our sex kind of stopped. I was okay with it when he was training or when he was competing to try to qualify to be in Olympics, but to remain that way afterwards when you were no longer competing or trying to get into the Olympics, 
that's an issue. So by 2020, when we were only having sex maybe once a month, if that, I started to want other men. And I don't feel bad for it. My needs weren't met. And to be completely honest, I'm pretty sure Teddy was cheating on me. What man goes that long without sex? Nobody does. He definitely was cheating, which is why it was so easy for him to move on to our therapist. So, in 2020, I approached him and I told him I want open marriage because I'm not happy and my needs aren't getting met. And I specifically wanted an open marriage just so I could have sex, but I didn't want to leave my husband. I didn't want to ruin my daughter's life and break up the family. She loves Teddy. Teddy loves her. Actually, I used to get jealous of their relationship between the 2018 and 2020 years. He never stopped showing her affection. They'd go out for ice cream and take walks, laugh, while Teddy and I were just at odds, and sometimes I wouldn't even speak. I did not like that. I was jealous. I was jealous of my daughter, too. I'd get a little angry with her and a little snappy, but I apologized to her for that. I have explained to her what happened, and she seemed to understand. One of the worst things I did, and I pray often that I'm forgiven for this, but Teddy told me he'd never forgive me for this. In 2019, I actually accused Teddy of being inappropriate with my daughter. I don't know what it was, I just was in a bad state of mind, and I just felt like, well, he's doing something with someone? And I was certain of it. I couldn't find him cheating on me. I didn't find anything in his phone, his laptops. I even followed him. Nothing. He'd just always go to work or go to the gym. I tracked him. I kept his location. He never did anything wrong, and I did something stupid. It just hit me one day, and I woke him up, and I asked him if he's been inappropriate with my daughter, and I will find out if he has. It was just sitting on my mind that he did. I questioned her, and I took her to the doctor. There was nothing, and I felt so stupid. Teddy cried and told me he couldn't believe that I would accuse him of something like this. It never went as far as me going to the police or anything. It was pretty much just between us and our home. I apologized, and I apologized. He told me before that he'd never forgive me, and when we were with our therapist, he told me that he still hasn't forgiven me for that. Prayer and God are how he decided to stay married to me. But it's been very hard. That's a wild accusation. I can get that, but I wish he could put himself in my shoes and understand why I would think something like that. But that is something I truly, truly regret. So, in 2020, when I asked Teddy about having the open relationship, like I said, he told me no. And that I was crazy for even asking something like this. He thought he shut it down and he promised me that we'd start having more sex and going out on more dates. He did try, but I no longer wanted him anymore. Once he started trying, this is when he started accusing me of cheating. He went through my things and he saw that I was talking to a guy on Tinder. I never met the guy because we just couldn't leave the house anyway. There was nowhere to go. Everything was shut down. But I promise you, I know for a fact, if I would have been able to meet that guy and go out, it would have gotten physical. He did invite me over to his place, but I kept turning him down, and Teddy saw that in the messages. I wasn't just going to go and sleep with someone. At least take me out to dinner first. But how could you at that time? The world was completely shut down. Teddy snapped when he saw the messages, but at least I didn't cheat physically. I convinced him that we should see a therapist immediately. He mentioned how there was a therapist at the church. Now at the time, church was virtual. We weren't attending. Eventually, church started to open up and some people would go, but most people watched online. It was just more comfortable that way because everyone was in fear. Him being so quick to suggest Suzanne at the church makes me think that he's always had a thing for her. I know she's probably always had a thing for him. I suggested we talk to someone else, but he'd say, well, she knows us and we're familiar with her. Suzanne was one of a few women that were single in the church. Most of everyone else was married or at least had a fiance. Suzanne is beautiful. I'm not going to lie about that, and I'm sure my husband always noticed. So, I allowed Teddy to convince me to see Suzanne as our therapist. 
Immediately on the first day, Suzanne asks, what are the biggest problems in your marriage? Of course, Teddy brings up me stressing him out and the accusation. What do you think can help our relationship move forward? Of course, Teddy says, if I stop emotionally cheating, telling Suzanne all about my friend from Tinder, this was so embarrassing. He told her about me wanting an open marriage. From the beginning, she looked at me as the bad guy. What brought you two together? Finally, I was able to speak. What was your relationship like at the beginning? Teddy took over again, claiming things were great, but I switched on him. She had us do something called the seven breath forehead connection exercise. We faced each other and put our foreheads together. We faced each other, tilted our chins down so our noses didn't touch. I thought this was so dumb. Gently touched foreheads, and then we had to breathe in sync with each other for at least seven seconds. Slow, deep breaths. Teddy and I hadn't been that close in so long. It hit me how much I missed that man. We were living together, but had been so far apart. I cried. We knew that that session would begin with that exercise, but right after that exercise was over, we ended the entire session early. I couldn't stop crying. Teddy did hug me, and he held me, and it felt so good. But once we got back home, nothing changed. He still was upset with me, and we kind of stayed distant. We'd smile around my daughter, but things just weren't the same anymore. We did continue on with therapy for two months straight, and we attended church every Sunday. Separately, I'd watch, and Teddy attended. It was so awkward, because I would wonder who our therapist, Suzanne, was telling my personal business to. I just had a feeling that she was doing it. I just really didn't trust her, and I begged Teddy for us to leave her as a therapist. After two months, he was okay with it. We found another therapist. Around this time is when our church started to allow people back in. I remember watching the church sessions on video, so I was very afraid to be around people at this time. My ex-husband made it a point to go into the church, and guess who else was there? Suzanne. She made it a point to be inside the church as well. How ironic, right? I wasn't allowing my daughter to go if I wasn't going to go. She wasn't going to go. I begged Teddy to stay home, but he wasn't having it. He was going. I know they developed a closer relationship at that time. What made me start investigating Teddy again is when another church member told me that Teddy was crying in the arms of Suzanne after church. He was falling to his knees and everything, and she held him like he was some baby. Six foot five, grown man, in the arms of a five foot four woman. I didn't know about this, and days later on Wednesday after the Sunday, he attended the church. I remember that day he came home. He was smiling, happy, talking about how the pastor gave a good word, and he hopes I didn't miss any of it. I didn't. I heard the same words. I thought it was good, but he acts like it was just life-changing or something. I remember him being so happy when I found out he was crying in the arms of another woman. I confronted him and asked him if he was cheating on me. He said, no, he hasn't. I told him that I was warned about him and Suzanne's relationship and how close they were. That's what I saw in his face, that he had something for Suzanne. I asked him to be honest with me and tell the truth. Did you want to be with her or not? Teddy looked in my eyes and said, yes. It hit me like a ton of bricks. This witch is stealing my husband from me. I wasn't going to let that happen. I asked him how long they've been sleeping together. I told him I was going to sue her and get her fired and she was going to lose her license. He said that they never started while we were having therapy. This all started since he's been attending church without me, and they've been talking more. He hadn't had sex with her, but he can honestly say that he's falling for her because she seems to care about him more than I do. What Teddy told me after that made me break down, and I hit the ground begging. He told me that he was filing for divorce. I couldn't believe I heard that word, divorce. He's going to break up our family for this woman. I begged him to stay with me, 
I begged him not to do this. I begged him to continue counseling with this new counselor. He wasn't having it, and he filed for divorce. I was wrecked. How was I going to tell my daughter that Teddy was leaving us for another woman? It's embarrassing. She would be devastated. When asked me to sign the papers and to get a lawyer, I tried my best not to do any of it, but he kept pushing. Teddy moved out himself. We didn't own a house. We never owned. He said was moving in with his brother. That wasn't true. He moved in with Suzanne. Teddy technically was cheating on me. Even if he didn't start sleeping with her or emotionally having an affair with her before the divorce. Just because we're getting a divorce does not mean we're not still married. So the fact that he's living with another woman, meaning I'm sure they're having sex, that's cheating. He wanted to live by the word of God, but cheating on me. He will pay for what he did. We had one meeting in a small room that was still considered a courtroom for our divorce. I kept trying to tell the judge that my husband is currently cheating on me, but it was nothing that he could do. I felt so defeated. My husband is betraying me. He gets upset with me just for simply talking to a guy because he neglected me, but he moves in with another woman and doesn't even try to fight for our marriage. I was disgusted. I fought for child support. I didn't get it at all. The person has suffered the most. In all of this is my daughter. Her biological father walked away from her. Now Teddy has walked away from her. Teddy doesn't even call her. After all, you're always my baby girl and her calling him daddy. He's just gone. Just like that, no care in the world. What type of monster has he become? Suzanne's okay with this? She's okay with him abandoning a young girl like that, not even three months after our divorce. He married Suzanne at our church, it was announced, on a Sunday during service. I had to listen to that while watching on Facebook Live. I no longer attend that church that was just disrespectful and wrong. I still follow Teddy on Facebook even though he unfollowed me. Suzanne announces that they were having a child together. I was devastated. I didn't want my little girl to find out, but she did. She seems like she's not phased by any of this. She's just at that age where she acts like nothing matters. She tried to tell me, well, life goes on. I tell her if she needs therapy or she wants to talk to me. I'm here for her, but she just tells me nothing's bothering her and she's focused on going to college after high school. My little girl is very intelligent. She wants to be a surgeon. She's always wanted to be a doctor since she was a little girl. She's highly intelligent. She truly acts like she's not phased by Teddy leaving. She acts like she doesn't even miss him. I'll tell her things I saw on Facebook about him. She asks me, why am I stalking him? I just don't understand why she doesn't care. He walked out of our lives and replaced the both of us. She's just not bothered by it, but it eats me up every single day till this day. Am I wrong for wishing that their child was born with maybe one foot or something? I guess it is evil, but I just want him to face some type of karma. I would have celebrated if he announced that on Facebook, that something was wrong with his child. I never got that wish. I never went back onto dating apps like Tinder or these other dating apps trying to find anyone. If Teddy came back to me right now and apologized, I'll take him back. I'll take him away from that bish, Suzanne. I've talked to a lawyer about trying to get her sued and getting her license revoked, but I just don't have any evidence of them having an affair while we were having sessions with her. There's no proof, and I checked. Remember how I said? I used to follow him with tracking devices, and I had connections to his phone. Well, he didn't realize that I still had connections to his phone for a while, and I've checked a lot of stuff. And honestly... He never cheated on me while we were in therapy. There really wasn't even any proof that he was cheating on me after we switched therapist. I just know about him crying in her arms, but they never really texted each other or talked to each other. It must have just been on Sundays when they saw each other. He ended up noticing that I had some software downloaded on his phone and confronted me about it via text. I never admitted to it, but he basically told me, I know that you downloaded this, but you've been spying on me all these years. How does it feel to waste your time? I never responded. I was so embarrassed. 
I've been reading the seven principles of making a marriage work and I realized that I made a ton of mistakes. Teddy wasn't perfect either, but I know on my part I made a ton of mistakes when was asking for an open marriage that was just stupid and selfish of me. It backfired and caused my husband to leave me for another woman. Wow. <laughs> another one bites the dust, right? <sighs> Thank you for sending in your story. Um, <laughs> you asked for it. You are asking for this. Why? You asked for an open marriage because he was upset about something. So your husband, the person you promised to be loyal to, the man that took in a child that wasn't his and treated her like his and treated her like his own. When that man is down, and yeah, it was for some time, some years. Can you say from 2018 to 2020? A couple years. You weren't willing to try everything first before asking for an open marriage. You know what? I'm just going to sleep with somebody else. The first thing you thought of, right? That's sad. That is sad. I'm not entirely mad at Teddy. Another woman started showing him interest and it happened to be the therapist. And, you know, she wanted him, so he went on with it. I'm not entirely mad at him for that. I don't think they were cheating during the therapy. You know, he probably noticed her in church, of course. You know, you said she's a beautiful woman. Like, just because you're married doesn't mean you don't notice people. But he was still loyal to you. You still were his, you still was his wife. He didn't step out on you. But as soon as you don't get your needs taken care of. Oh, it's time to step out on my husband. Messed up, man. That's not cool. Guys, let me know what you think about this in the comments. If you want to send in a story, send it to true story at gmail.com here. I'll put it on the screen. That's true story nation at gmail.com. I'm going to catch you guys at the next one.